And we're joined now by Anna Marie Cox of Air America, who I know going to the going to the dinner well, tonight. Yeah, clearly. you're going double date with Sarah Palin. Yeah, um, <laughs> she's around yeah. one, or is she? Right. No, I, was, I think it was her and, and Todd, you know, and me and uh, and Chris. We're just uh, so it's like we, we have intimate dinners every once in a while. Oh, the genius would that be if Sarah Palin was invited to the state? Oh my, no, there would, would be, be no other star to, power. Yeah, well, like, I mean, I've told you how excited the White House is to have her be, get, be the nominee. So oh, I think that that would be that'd be a great first step for them. Invite, invite away. She still has an invitation for this program as well. We should know. Anna, the White House saying now there's going to be an Afghanistan announcement. So only a week from now. Another right. week of buildup uh, around <laughs> around this, a primetime address. Right. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna put it all out there. We had nine meetings total. Right. I mean, it, it just it, seems now like Orzag is now in those. Meetings. And Orzag showed up. We let they let us know. Yes, there's the budget. Our budget guys, there, our numbers guy is, is showing up all of a sudden. What is the best possible scenario that comes out of this? Now we know that there's going to be a good number of troops, and there's going to be a lot of folks that aren't happy about this. Um, I think I, w I was just thinking. I wonder how mu how much of the time between now and that address is going to be spent on policy, and how much is going to be spent on the speech. Um, because it's explaining to the American people why he's doing what he's doing that's going to be the hard thing to do. Um, I think that what's interesting about, about the Afghanistan war is that the country is, um, is equally-ish divided. It's not, it, there's, it's more people are against it than for it, but how strongly those people feel on either side. It's like a 40, you know, 60 split with in the high 30s on either side, people feeling strongly for or strongly against. So now, so now that it, That's a hard audience to address. I yeah. mean, that's my, that's my right. point. So n and now that uh, it looks like he's going closer to the Fulma crystal than uh, we did. How, what, how does Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, now come and do her supportive of the Democratic president thing that she she will do? But but where does she where where does she find that now? I think the rationale. I mean, it'll be interesting how he explains it. I mean, I think there's sort of two different roads you can take. One, he has to explain that this is for the, not just for Afghanistan's good, but for our own good. Um, and he has to say that he has a plan. And he has to give the idea about what that plan is for an exit strategy. The thing is, with this with this surge, I mean, people call it that, but it's not a surge like a, a, like Iraq, and that there is right now no definite endpoint. Um, when we went into Iraq with the surge, the, there, there was a very specific sort of timeline about how we were going to do this. I mean, we, we're still not quite out yet, but we've, yeah. we've brought down the troops. Um, but Afghanistan, um, the crystal simply said, this is how many we need to, to just do anything. Um, and so you give them that many, and then what happens? Right. Yeah whether it's measurable. Uh, on health care, on a time to give up on Joe Lieberman, if you're, if you're uh, married. I gave up I mean, on Joe Lieberman a long time ago. <laughs> but, I, mean, I wish voters <laughs> would. <laughs> but should they even try? I mean, should Democrats even try to get him in the fold at this I point? He's I think, made so well, clear. I, I think that I, I, really, I really think that he needs to be, you know, uh, held accountable at some point for this stuff. I think they need to strip him of his seniority in the committees that he leads. or Do something. He is no longer based, he is no longer a Democrat. But he, really. gave, the, he gave the 60, though, on Saturday, which is, the, that's the argument for keeping him in the caucus. That's the argument for the caucus and now he's done it so <laughs> you don't need him anymore. Get him anywhere. <laughs> he worked tirelessly for John McCain and Obama and Reid exactly. made sure he kept his chairmanship. No, exactly. And that is why I mean what does he have to do to, to be stripped of that? What is like what well, is it's what the, Democrats need to do. If they had sixty two votes in the Senate or sixty one well, votes they could afford it. I guess it's a, think about it. I think that it's true. Reed has a better chance. Well obviously he has a better chance with Olympia Snow than he does with, with, with Joe Lee But we know what Olympia Snow wants for that chance and that is a triggered public option. Chuck Schumer is still out there saying we're not busting off of this opt out. Do you see where this is going at all? The I sense? have no idea. I mean, the people that I talk to are, I think, just happy to have that six, the vote on Saturday behind them, right. happy to sit down and, and, and look at it. I've, I have more people than I've ever spoken to. Well, I've been doing this for very long, but the num number of lawmakers who are making a point of telling you they're reading the bill, you know? <laughs> they don't want to be called about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anna, it's really extraordinary. Uh, Anna, the RNC talking about uh, what you might call a purity test uh, right. around, uh, uh, around candidates. And I'm looking forward to the chastity ball that they'll be holding alongside the purity <laughs> Test. Are Democrats just shaking in their boots about the oh, fact God, that Republicans no. might be pure? No. <laughs> I really don't think so. I think this is great news for Democrats, um, for the Republicans to put out in, in, put to put out the message that they're infighting. Like to go ahead and be like, yep, that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're fighting amongst ourselves. You guys go ahead and have a party. We're just gonna sit here and squabble over tea parties. I mean it's not it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but, you know, uh, I do think that uh, the RNC bringing in Alex Castellanos, um, who was a, a Romney aide, he's really smart, knows what he's doing, well-spoken. They've had a lot of, you know, they've had a lot of sort of disarray over there. Um, they need someone, even if he's not the person who actually does the sort of nitty-gritty work, they do need someone sort of crafting a message over there, and he can probably do that. Yeah, and and he... Fine. 
fully uh, understands that you need to expand the party's reach in order yes. to become a majority not party. Going yes. in, that, in that other direction. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Anna Marie Cox, Air America, thanks for being here and uh, sharing part of your day. We look forward to your date tonight with Sarah Palin. All right, thank you. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you again next week. Thank you all. That does it for this edition of Top Line. Be sure to click us on again tomorrow. And it's Twitter.com slash The Note. I won't be tweeting from the dinner tonight, but I'll try to tell you what I'm learning. <laughs>